according to. Thank you. Good, thanks. Uh, so good morning, uh, good afternoon, good evening, uh, everyone. Um, so in today's uh, session, I will be giving a overview of uh, jet energy loss um, in core blown plasma. So uh, first I would like to just uh, give a reminder um, Please join this uh, Slack channel, uh, July 29, August 1, Jet Physics, um, for uh, questions that you may have. Um, and also, I will try to take a pause in, in between um, and check um, on the Slack to if you have any questions. So, uh, can you guys, uh, can you see my screen, uh, my slides? It's coming through. Okay. So basically uh, in today's lecture, I'm gonna give a brief overview of hard probes in heavy ion collision and talk about the uh, factorization of soft and hard scales. And then talk about the scale dependence of um, part on distribution functions and uh, scale evolution of uh, fragmentation function. And then I'll talk about a basic overview of Jetscape framework, uh, especially in the context of uh, jet energy loss um, in high virtuality and low virtuality uh, phases. And I'll talk about uh, three particular uh, jet energy loss module, uh, Matter, um, LBT, and Martini. And in the end, I I'll uh, show um, results from uh, this multi-stage jet energy loss approach, uh, especially matter um, plus LBT um, energy loss model. So without uh, further ado, let me uh, get started with um, how hard probes are generated um, in heavy ion collision. So here a uh, picture on, on the left-hand side, I'm showing uh, a proton-proton um, collision and on the right hand side, I'm showing heavy ion collision and how the jets and leading hadrons are produced um, in this collision. So essentially uh, in proton-proton collision, you have a proton beam uh, coming from one side and the proton beam uh, coming from another uh, side. And these are um, Lorentz contracted due to um, a relativistic the uh, high energy and partons uh, from one of these uh, proton and parton from the other uh, side these undergo a uh, hard scattering and uh, after hard scattering these partons are highly uh, off shell and due to which they undergo uh, vacuum radiation and these radiations are collinear and um, eventually uh, they hadronize and they are detected um, uh, in the experimental uh, uh, detectors. So essentially uh, these uh, leading hadrons and um, uh, jets, they are produced from initial state or hard scattering. And um, in, in detector, what we observe is a collimated spray of soft and hard hadrons in a narrow cone. And these collinear spray of uh, soft uh, and hard hadrons is uh, usually referred to as uh, jets. And studying jets is uh, useful because um, it directly gives us a information about the hard parton that is generated in the hard collision. And um, perturbative QCD is uh, uh, used uh, to a high precision to compute this hard scattering uh, matrix uh, element. Um, in heavy ion collision, in addition to um, uh, these hard scattering uh, and the propagation of this parton uh, uh, having this uh, shower, the, the hard parton that is produced in this collision, uh, it has to go through 
the quark-gluon plasma that is uh, also produced in, in heavy ion collision. So in addition to these vacuum-like splitting, splittings, the, the hard part on that is produced, it has to go through the medium and one needs to account um, for the scatterings that uh, parton undergoes in the medium. So um, essentially what one can do is one can measure the uh, yield of leading hadrons and uh, jets also, and then compare with the uh, yield of leading hadrons and, and jets in proton-proton collision and compare these two. Uh, to infer the properties uh, of core gluon plasma that is produced um, in heavy ion collision. So there are various uh, experimental observables that uh, indicate that in heavy ion collision, there is a formation of core gluon plasma. And this core gluon plasma that is produced, it is strongly um, interacting plasma. So one such uh, observable is called uh, nuclear modification factor RAA. Uh, the definition is shown here. Essentially, one measures the uh, yield of um, high PT hadrons that are produced in nucleus-nucleus uh, collision. And one divides that by the yield that is produced in the proton-proton collision and scale by the number of binary collisions. Uh, so nucleon, nucleon, number of nucleon, nucleon collisions in, in this um, nucleus, nucleus collision. So uh, this quantity has been measured by uh, experiment. Uh, and I show here a experimental results for um, charged uh, particles, isolated photons and uh, Z0 boson. So here we can see in this plot, uh, this is plotted as a function of uh, PT, which is the uh, transverse momentum of the uh, detected final state uh, charged hadron. Uh, excuse me. Um, so the PT here means the it is transverse to the uh, beam direction, uh, essentially. So here we can see that the, the RAA for charged particle, which is the, um, the, the black points here and the blue points, um, uh, these are the experimental measurements. And we can see that it is uh, highly suppressed. It is below one. Um, and this essentially indicate that there is a formation of a uh, nuclear medium that is uh, strongly interacting. And um, uh, it is also supported by, uh, if one look at the uh, nuclear modification of the isolated photons that are produced in the hard scattering. So for the RA, for um, uh, these isolated photon is unity, which means that the photons that are produced in, in the hard scattering, these uh, do not interact with the quark gluon plasma that is produced uh, in the medium. So it, so these two comparison essentially tells us that the uh, there is a formation of quark gluon plasma and it is uh, strongly interacting in in nature. So um, now the question is how do we uh, compute uh, these observables uh, in in a theoretical framework? And um, it is essentially uh, uh, one is able to compute these observable is uh, by utilizing a um, theorem that is called factorization. Factorization is essentially a, um, uh, it, 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 it is a equation that tells you that the probability uh, for the initial state, um, uh, the initial state and the hard scattering and the fragmentation function. These three um, uh, probabilities can be um, factorized. Um, and the total cross section is essentially given in terms of the product of these um, uh, probabilities. So the production of the hard quark uh, or hard parton um, in, in this scattering so this is a 
uh, quark quark uh, interacting undergoing the hard scattering this matrix element can be factorized from the parton that comes out of the proton here or the nucleon here and the proton that comes out um, from the nucleon here so the probability for uh, this parton to carry a certain momentum fraction x um, is represented by a function f here um, and here also the parton to carry a um, momentum fraction x um, uh, out of this uh, total uh, momenta of this nucleon or proton is um, written, uh, expressed as a parton distribution function um, and the Pardon, pardon, scattering uh, is uh, written in terms of the matrix element uh, shown in the red blob here. And then finally, the, the parton which undergoes uh, vacuum uh, like radiation or in medium modification in presence of a quark lone plasma that is encoded and factorized from the pardon distribution function and the production of. Uh, the uh, this hard scattering cross section can be factorized and is encoded in uh, function that is called uh, fragmentation function. So essentially, it represents the probability for a parton to uh, produce a particular hadron with momentum fraction uh, z. So uh, these. Uh, functions the parton distribution function and the fragmentation function these are non perturbative phenomena and they uh, they have a scale evolution uh, and it depends on the q square which is uh, exchanged uh, in in the hard collision so next i would like to talk about um, the scale evolution of uh, parton distribution function so essentially um, this comes uh, from this, uh, these DIS uh, experiments where you have uh, electron um, going through a proton and exchanging a, a photon um, with a momentum transfer uh, Q square. And the, what electron sees in, inside proton essentially depends on the momentum transfer that uh, occurred during the collision. So in 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 um, in a very fundamental uh, form, proton at very large q square uh, or very small q square is consists of three valence uh, quarks. But as one increases the q square, um, or if you have uh, a, a process where the momentum transfer uh, is large, one can probe the internal structure um, of, of the proton. And one sees uh, these short distance fluctuations inside proton and starts to see uh, C-like um, partons uh, inside proton. And uh, the, uh, in, in, in this um, expression, the Momentum fraction X uh, essentially is written in terms of Q square divided by two times the product, uh, scalar product of the four momenta of incoming electron and four momenta of proton. And in the rest frame of proton, one can express this as uh, two times um, mass times the energy of electron in the rest frame of proton. So essentially, if uh, one is looking at high uh, energy um, collision, the X will become smaller and smaller. And this effect has been um, characterized in, in terms of um, uh, uh, this pattern distribution function. And I'm showing here uh, experimentally measured um, pattern distribution function as a function of uh, momentum fraction X. Um, for Q square uh, 1.9 GeV square and here uh, Q square 10 uh, GeV square. So Q square is the 
uh, momentum transfer uh, square that happens in during the collision. And one can see here that at low Q square, the it's predominantly the um, up uh, the valence quark up and down quark um, is uh, have higher probability. Um, but as one increases Q square, one can see that the the gluonic um, distribution function enhances. And in this particular expression, uh, I, I, I want to mention that the uh, the distribution function has been reduced by a factor of 20 to put this in, in the same scale. And one can start seeing this C-like um, uh, also um, flavor in, inside proton. Um, so next I would like to talk about the uh, Q-square evolution of uh, fragmentation function. So essentially the in the initial state hard scattering, the, the hard parton that is produced, it is highly virtual. And the parton undergoes, um, by the way, is there any uh, question? I would like to, I guess, take a pause and see if there is any question. I don't see any in the chat. Okay. Okay, wait. Uh, so there's one in, in uh, Slack. <clears throat> what is the physical meaning of RA well shape below 20 GV in slide four? Okay, there are already two replies. Mm -hmm. Um, so the question is about the, the shape of the RAA and the, the fact that there's a minimum around 5 GV. Um, so as the as you look at the high, as you go higher uh, in energy, essentially um, what we are saying is that the part, it, it essentially corresponds to the part on that is produced um, in, in this hard scattering has carries higher energy. And uh, the nuclear modification of that leading parton would be uh, smaller as the energy increases. So that's why this uh, rises um, as one goes to higher uh, PT. I, I would say the, the question is more about the shape below five GV and why there is a minimum. And this has to be related to the fact that this is charged hadrons. Uh, so there are all types of hadrons, including mesons and baryons. And this kind of shape below 5 GV, there's no universal energy loss reflected in every hadron because there are other effects. Yes, so below, um, below uh, I would say 5 or even 8 GV, um, um, there are various uh, effects, um, even from hadronization and um, soft sector can also start to play a role uh, in, in, in there. Um, yeah. So usually the applicability of the um, perturbative QCD uh, is mostly above um, um, 5 GV, this high, high PT region. Um, and there the dependence is smooth. Okay, yes. Can, yeah. Um, move on with this. Are there other questions? So if uh, there are none, uh, then I would just like to go, go ahead. So, um, uh, here I want to talk about the Q square evolution of uh, fragmentation function. Um, so the partons that is produced in these uh, initial state hard scattering, um, these partons are highly virtual and essentially they undergo uh, radiative splittings um, in, in vacuum, uh, which decreases um, their virtuality and these radiations are uh, uh, collinear. Uh, it is more favored to have a collinear uh, radiation. And from these uh, splittings, the virtuality of 
uh, the hard part on it uh, decreases. Um, and uh, essentially when the Q square of Q square, which is uh, referred to as off shellness or the virtuality becomes smaller and uh, of the order of one GeV square, what happens is the coupling um, constant starts to grow uh, as one can see in this plot here. It's uh, plotted here is uh, strong coupling constant alpha s um, as a function of uh, scale q. And um, at, at very low uh, q, essentially the, the coupling constant grows and the perturbative uh, description is no longer valid uh, in this regime. Um, and these splittings basically uh, cease to uh, happen and uh, the exact mechanism of the hadronization is, is not known. And um, also since the Q square becomes uh, really small and these particles are close to on shell, the, head the hadronization process itself is uh, referred to as a a uh, long distance phenomena. Um, so next I would like to, uh, in, in the same um, um, context, I would like to give a little bit more detail. And um, I would like to introduce uh, kinematic variables uh, in light cone coordinate, um, which is usually used um, in, in these calculations. So here I'm showing a forward uh, scattering diagram this is um, by forward scattering diagram. What we mean is that the either uh, the the initial state is shown um, here and here, and the cut line uh, represents the final state, um, which essentially means that um, the the part the the part on which are in this cut line they are on shell. So here I'm considering a process where uh, the quark emits a, a collinear gluon um, and then this uh, part on or the quark uh, frag fragments into hadron. So here um, I have these in, in light cone coordinates, uh, these momenta. So let me just uh, first talk about what these uh, quantities are. So in Minkowski coordinate, uh, the four vector uh, is usually expressed in this following format. And if one wants to express these same uh, four vector in, in terms of light cone coordinates, uh, and if I choose um, Z to be axis to define plus and minus component, uh, the plus component you get by adding um, the Z component with the zeroth component and uh, the minus component you get by subtracting the Z component uh, with the zeroth component and X and Y are referred to as a transverse component uh, as usual. So in this uh, light cone coordinate system, the off cellness uh, is represented um, uh, as two Q plus Q minus uh, minus Q per. And the usefulness of uh, this notation is that um, if for a very high energetic uh, uh, parton, uh, let's say a parton is traveling in negative Z direction with a high momenta, then essentially the Q minus um, would be much larger compared to Q plus component uh, because uh, this will become minus. And the transverse component would be zero because I'm choosing the part on to travel in, in a Z direction essentially. So what happens, uh, these uh, kind of momentum uh, uh, inequalities are useful uh, when uh, solving um, matrix element uh, equations. So I'll use this uh, notation uh, to uh, describe the process. So next I would like to talk about a useful theorem that is used in the calculation. Uh, it's called optical theorem. Essentially what it means that the, um, the amplitude of a forward scattering diagram, uh, if you take two times the imaginary part of it, it's essentially um, equal to the product of the amplitude of um, the pro uh, process that you get from the cut line 
um, times the product of the uh, complex conjugate, which corresponds to the other part of the diagram. So essentially uh, uh, in, in this equation, the cut line is uh, representing the final state. And uh, this is initial state and initial state here. And uh, what cut line does is you replace the propagator um, with the delta function um, as shown here. So if the, the momenta for momenta is P square, then uh, one replaces that with delta P square and compute the amplitude of this process. So, um, so I'd go ahead with the uh, uh, fragmentation function. Um, so in, in, in fragmentation function, uh, essentially what's happening is that um, since this part on uh, that are produced in, in the hard uh, collision, they are highly off shell. And I'm considering here one uh, gluon uh, emission diagram. So you have the part on with Q plus Q minus uh, momenta and it radiates a uh, collinear uh, gluon uh, carrying a momentum fraction one minus Y and Y uh, is the momentum fraction carried by um, the, the quark here. And the cut line as usual represents the final state here. So this is a real diagram contributing to this uh, process and then corresponding virtual diagram that uh, contributes at this order is when the, the quark emits a gluon and it is absorbed back uh, by, the, by the quark. So for these two process, one can compute uh, the uh, uh, scattering, uh, matrix element and here I'm showing the um, um, probability for uh, these two diagrams. The first one um, is shown here and the second term is for the virtual diagram. And um, in, in this uh, equation, the P represents the splitting function uh, is shown here. Essentially it's a probability for uh, this quark to radiate a collinear gluon with momentum fraction uh, y. Um, and in this particular equation, one can see that if y is uh, becomes one, so essentially the, the emitted gluon is uh, soft, um, this splitting function diverges, uh, but the same splitting function appears in the virtual diagram as well, um, which is also going to be divergent at y uh, equal to one. So these two divergence basically cancels uh, in this process, but um, there is a L, uh, there is another divergence in this term, which is a collinear divergence. Uh, and that happens when the L perp goes to zero and L perp represents the transverse momentum of this collinear gluon. So when this gluon is highly collinear, um, uh, there is another divergence. So that divergence uh, does not cancel use uh, by adding this virtual diagram and it um, should be a, uh, included in, in the fragmentation function as this uh, happens in, in a long distance um, or in, in a distant future. So here the formation time um, is represented and one can see that it has inverse dependence on L perp. So as L perp becomes smaller, the formation time becomes uh, larger. So essentially this uh, is a, a long distance phenomenon should be absorbed in, in the fragmentation function. And this divergence when one absorbs in the fragmentation function essentially give rise to uh, scale evolution of the fragmentation function or introduces a scale. Um, so in order to absorb this di divergence, what one does is one breaks this um, uh, integral in and introduces an intermediate scale mu square. Um, and this divergent part one absorbs in the redefinition uh, of fragmentation function. So here I'm showing um, the uh, uh, redefined uh, fragmentation function at scale Q square, which um, depends on um, how 
the part on transition from scale q square to mu square by single gluon emission or two gluon emission or three gluon emission and so on and one essentially gets a series uh, of terms uh, up to scale mu square and one can simplify this equation uh, and one represents this in terms of this um, in in integral differential uh, equation um, which essentially has a uh, evolution in in q square so it is a differential equation in in q square and in order to solve this one needs a, a initial condition uh, to solve uh, this and usually one uses uh, e plus e minus uh, collisions uh, uh, to constrain the fragmentation function where one um, parameterize the fragmentation function at lower scale uh, mu square and then evolves using uh, this kind of DGLAP evolution equation. So basically here I talked about um, how the, the hard part on that is produced in hard scattering evolves in, in vacuum, but in heavy ion collision, we have um, quark gluon plasma also uh, through which the part on has to go through and uh, there are in medium scatterings. So next, I would like to focus on how the hard part on uh, propagates and loses energy in presence of quark gluon plasma. So um, the, the hard part on uh, essentially uh, encounters multiple scales um, as it goes through uh, the evolving plasma. So here I'm showing the this um, blue line here represents the hard part on that is produced and as it goes through the medium it encounters these scatterings and cascades into different um, uh, energy and virtuality regime uh, and depending on the exchange uh, with the plasma the the part on also sees a different structure quasi particle uh, structure uh, in in the plasma and if the momentum transfer with the pl uh, plasma is um, a uh, small uh, the plasma would look um, to be um, dilute uh, essentially so here um, i'm showing these different phases uh, uh, low energy low virtuality uh, phase essentially these partons are at thermal scale uh, in the low virtuality phase the scattering is uh, dominant um, whereas in initial phase uh, where you have high virtuality, it's mostly uh, radiation uh, dominant. Um, in the high virtuality phase, the one uses a higher twist um, approach for uh, jet energy loss and the relevant uh, energy loss module is the matter. Uh, in low virtuality phase, uh, but still high energy, uh, one uses on-shell part on uh, transport model um, and theoretical frameworks are uh, AME and BDMPS uh, like approaches and relevant um, energy loss modules are uh, LBT and Martini. And in low energy and low virtuality phase, uh, one relies on strong coupling formalism. Uh, essentially ADS CFT module could be used uh, to describe this phenomenon. So far, there is no, no uh, unified uh, equation that could describe all these different uh, regimes of parton energy loss. Um, and uh, essentially in, in, in this uh, context, there are various questions that one uh, wants to learn. Essentially one wants to learn is um, if one can um, extract the quasi-particle structure um, inside quark gluon plasma, and how does the jet energy loss, uh, jet energy thermalizes in the plasma? And uh, uh, how one can um, compute uh, jet transport coefficient that characterizes these different um, um, uh, energy loss uh, of the hard part on. So in order to um, address these questions, one needs to, um, uh, have a um, a unified framework that can encompass uh, these different phenomena, and uh, here I'm showing a 
a layout of Jetscape framework uh, that is used to simulate uh, different aspects of heavy and collision. Uh, this framework is modular uh, and uh, task-based event uh, generator. And this uh, framework is modular enough to um, include different uh, energy loss modules um, in, in it. So here, uh, the initial state uh, module, uh, this uh, block here represents initial state module. And in the top line, you have um, hearts, modules for heart sector. And in, in the bottom panel, we have modules uh, for uh, evolution of soft sector. And then these um, are hadronized and saved um, in, in different um, format. So in this talk, basically, I'm going to talk about um, energy loss modules matter, uh, LBT, Martini, and um, uh, only uh, these three modules. So um, the matter, which is for the high virtuality phase, LBT and Martini, which is uh, for low virtuality phase. So before I go further, um, I would like to take a pause and see if there are questions. I don't see any in the chat or in Slack. Okay. Now it's your time to ask or we should move on. Um, Let's move on. Let's yeah, okay. We have 20 minutes remaining, so and I still have a bit of slides <laughs> to go through. Okay. Go ahead. So uh, yeah, in this, uh, presentation, I will basically cover um, these three energy loss module in, in the context of light flavors. And uh, we will have uh, another talk uh, after this um, from Venkai. He, he will cover about heavy quark energy loss. And then uh, on Monday, um, we'll have a discussion on medium response to uh, jets. So let me go ahead and talk about uh, the energy loss in high virtuality phase. So essentially, um, in this uh, phase, uh, one in high virtuality phase, one uh, uses higher twist uh, kind of formalism uh, to um, include the um, um, the energy loss in uh, core gluon plasma. And um, here I'm showing expression for a a medium induced uh, gluon radiation. So essentially one scattering, one emission, uh, the yield of um, gluon radiation. And uh, this term K here represents the uh, energy loss kernel, which depends on uh, these non-perturbative uh, transport coefficient uh, shown here, Q hat, E hat, uh, and E2 hat. So essentially Q hat is a transport coefficient that characterizes the uh, broadening of the hard part on in, in transverse uh, direction. And it is the square of the transverse momentum, uh, average, average of uh, square transverse uh, momentum per unit length. And E hat and E2 hat, these transport co coefficient essentially characterizes the, the broadening in the longitudinal uh, direction. So in, in this high virtuality uh, phase, uh, one relies on in medium uh, DGLAP evolution equation, and it is based on uh, repeating uh, single emission, single scattering kernel and diagrams are shown here. Um, essentially it cascades from high virtuality to low virtuality phase by repeating this uh, single uh, emission, single scattering kernel. And these are derived in a regime where the Q square of, of the pardon is large enough, uh, uh, much larger than the Q hat times uh, tau minus. And I'm showing here a, a in medium DGLAP evolution equation. Uh, this first term in blue corresponds to the vacuum part and the term in the red uh, blob represents the medium part. And here uh, there is a, a transport coefficient Q hat appearing in, in, in this ex expression. And vacuum contribution essentially are dominant in this phase. Um, and um, the 
uh, scatterings are uh, essentially uh, uh, very few uh, in this phase. So next, um, I would like to talk about the um, energy loss in the low virtuality phase. Uh, so first, uh, I would like to talk about the uh, LBT um, jet energy loss model. So it is based on uh, linear Boltzmann transport equation, essentially uh, solving the evolution of uh, phase space distribution that depends on the uh, elastic uh, scattering uh, rate of elastic scattering and rate of inelastic uh, scattering. So here I'm showing diagrams uh, that contributes in the elastic scatterings, uh, T-channel, U-channel, uh, S-channel uh, diagrams here. And essentially one needs to sum over uh, different, uh, these different channels to get the total rate of um, elastic scattering. And then the probability for elastic scattering is given by this rate times the delta t, uh, and essentially delta t is the time that uh, a time step uh, for which one solves these um, uh, or try to compute the splittings. So uh, this is for the elastic scattering kernel. Uh, in the inelastic scattering, um, uh, one is uh, it essentially includes uh, following um, uh, processes where the scattering could happen before uh, the emission or the emitted gluon can also undergo uh, scattering um, or the part on after, after the gluon emission can undergo scattering. So um, this is um, uh, this expression here essentially captures uh, the single emission single uh, scattering um, diagrams contributions um, and this equation one then integrates over um, k per and uh, the x here to get the yield of average number of uh, medium induced gluon um, and so so here uh, essentially the scattering is controlled by the q hat that is shown in this expression here and alpha s that appears it refers to the um, emitted coupling of this uh, quark with the emitted gluon so and then uh, in lbt model the multiple uh, it includes multiple scattering at each uh, time steps and these are uh, given by poisson uh, distribution function and the inelastic probability for uh, medium induced uh, gluon radiation is essentially uh, given uh, by a following expressions so uh, these are the processes that are uh, encompass included in the lbt jet energy loss modules next i would like to talk about uh, the martini uh, energy loss module so essentially it is um, based on uh, solving a fokker planck type of uh, rate equation that is shown here, um, where the rate itself are computed in a finite temperature field theory using uh, AME formalism. And in this uh, formalism, uh, one, the approximation essentially is that the, the, the temperature of the plasma is uh, uh, very large and the coupling, uh, the QCD coupling is much, much smaller than one. Um, here also one um, looks at um, uh, single emission uh, process, uh, medium induced uh, single emission processes, but one has these um, multiple scatterings um, in, in, in the diagram. Um, and if the, the emitted glue on the formation time for the uh, emitted glue on the tau f is much larger than the mean free path of the um, successive scatterings, the scatterings uh, cannot be treated um, independently and one needs to essentially um, resum these um, multiple scatterings in, in the calculation. And um, since uh, uh, because of uh, these coherent uh, scatterings, it uh, leads to a suppression in, in the emission. And this phenomena essentially is uh, termed as the uh, LPM effect. 
uh, in AV formalism, the LPM effect is essentially calculated uh, using resumming uh, infinite um, ladder of these scattering uh, processes. And once uh, one do that, um, uh, one arrives at uh, following uh, rate equation that is shown here. Um, these are the thermal uh, distribution functions. And here we have uh, X in, in these uh, function essentially represents the momentum fraction X that is carried by the single gluon that is emitted um, in, in this um, process. Um, and the function f that is shown in this equation is essentially a solution to another uh, integral equation, uh, which depends on collision kernel um, and a by mass, um, um, which is um, a unknown uh, uh, quantity. And usually, the the parameter g s is determined from fitting to the experimental uh, data. Um, in LB, uh, Martini uh, has elastic scattering rate same as LBT, um, uh, but in addition uh, to that, um, it also the Martini uh, module also includes this uh, quark gluon conversion channel uh, in it. <laughs> so next, uh, um, in in the um, Jetscape framework essentially matter LBT and Martini module. These also include uh, medium response through a recoil hole for malism. Essentially, to show that, uh, I show here this particular picture where the the energetic parton exchanges um, uh, undergoes scattering with the with the plasma, and um, this after scattering. Um, um the 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 orange line here uh the, after scattering from the medium this is referred to as recoil which is essentially a medium parton but after scattering with the jet parton and the green line or the green arrow shows shows um the parton that is sampled from the quark gluon plasma um and the this orange line, which is recoil, it can further undergo uh, scattering with the plasma. Um, and the, the way we uh, uh, sample these uh, partons from the medium is using uh, thermal distribution. Um, in, in the Jetscape framework, what we do is we keep track of these partons that are sampled from the plasma. And these uh, green blobs that are shown here, they are hadronized separately. Um, and the orange line, which are the jet parton and the recoil partons, these two are hadronized together and used to form a total signal. Um, and the hadrons that comes from whole partons that's shown in, in the green, uh, are used to determine the correlated backgrounds uh, to the jet. And these are subtracted if they fall inside the jet cone. Uh, their energy and momentum is subtracted if they fall inside the jet cone. Uh, so next, I would like to show uh, results from um, uh, Jetscape uh, setup. So first, I would like to show here results for uh, PP19 uh, tune. Uh, Essentially, uh, this first panel is inclusive jet cross section as a function of jet PT. Uh, these plots here are for uh, jet shape. Um, this plot here is for uh, jet mass observable. Um, this is a ratio plot compared with the experimental data uh, for charged hadron yield at uh, 200 GeV and charged hadron yield. Uh, also ratio plot at 2.76 TeV. Um, one can see a good agreement uh, essentially with the experimental data. Um, for the um, uh, nucleus nucleus uh, collisions, um, uh, there are several choices within Jetscape. Um, I'm showing here only results for um, jet energy loss module matter plus LBT. Um, and in, in this 
uh, plot here basically we did a, um, a study where we vary the functional form of q hat uh, so here i'm plotting uh, jet ra as a function of jet pt comparing with the experimental data and this is charged hadron yield as a function of um, uh, pt of the hadron and uh, these two are basically the matter plus lbt calculation one with uh, this uh, q square dependent uh, answers function that is uh, used in in the as, as a correction factor to the stl uh, in the high virtuality phase and the green is purely using hard thermal loop uh, stl form of q hat both in uh, high virtuality and low virtuality phase um, essentially, one can see that there is a good uh, description uh, with the experimental data for that uh, red uh, line. And uh, with the parameters uh, that are uh, in this model um, uh, are set from this fit, and then one can go ahead and also look at uh, collision energy dependence of uh, jet RA and part, uh, hadron RA at 2.76 TV. Uh, and also at 200 GeV without changing any parameters. Uh, that essentially the parameter that you obtain at 5 TeV. Uh, and one can see that there is a uh, matter plus LBT can describe um, the experimental data. Um, we also uh, I'm showing here uh, also results um, for um, matter plus LBT. Uh, comparison with the experimental data for jet fragmentation function. Um, um, and here we can see that the, it, there are the deviations with the experimental data at certain uh, PT. And essentially it uh, means that one needs to um, um, need certain uh, other uh, missing ingredients in, in the formulation. Uh, so with that, essentially, I would like to summarize my my talk. Uh, essentially, I gave a summary uh, talk for uh, factorization of soft and hard scale, and I talked about uh, scale dependence of part on distribution function um, and vacuum deglap uh, equation and medium modified deglap e equation. And I gave a brief overview of uh, jet energy loss modules that are in the jet state framework, matter, LBT, uh, and Martini. Um, and next talk in this jet session would be from Venkai. He's going to talk about the heavy quark uh, energy loss for malism. And then we have a talk on um, talk and discussion on uh, Monday for weakly coupled and strongly coupled approach to medium response. Uh, with that, I would like to thank uh, all the TA and chairs. Thank you very much for this nice overview. So we have uh, five minutes left for questions. There were a couple of questions in the Slack. They were already answered, but if you think you want more clarification, please go ahead or if you have other questions. Again, if you if you have uh, other questions, um, you're welcome to ask now, or if they come up later when you think about it, uh, please use the Slack channel. Uh, you can always ask a question later. Yeah, I see a couple of questions, and I think they they are answered. Should I? Yeah. No, I, I think it's okay if they were already addressed. If you want to add something, you can you can do so. But uh... well, let's uh, thank Amit again, and uh, we can uh, move on, getting set up for the next talk. Okay.
Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.